Rod Barnes, uh, a veteran uh, of the uh, the coaching game, Richie. He's been in this a long time. Went to the tourney in 2016. He's going to be coaching his 800th game this season, Rod. How does that sound? 800. Oh, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it, it tells you that I've had some good coaches and some good players and uh, some good administration to give me an opportunity to coach that many games. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, you you return, you're kind of a rarity these days. You return six guys, four starters from last year's team where you look up and down other rosters, whether it's in the Big West or throughout the country. And most guys, they're, they're lucky to bring back two starters. Um, how much better did you sleep at night this past off season with that retention? Well, I, I, I slept well. I mean, when you have four starters, again, in, in this day's kind of basketball, in this climate, if you could just, as you mentioned, get two guys back, I mean, you feel pretty good. But to have four starters back says something about uh, the kids that we've recruited, but also the opportunity that we can get off to a good start. Coach, I told you this a couple years ago. Um, you know, you, you, you're close to 400 wins, and I was uh, unfortunately the unfortunate recipient of one of your wins when I was a grad assistant at Austin P. 20 years ago, and you stomped us. We got a good game check from you, but uh, thanks for getting us good there. But uh, uh, <laughs> look, uh, Jeff talks about your four starters coming back. I talked to your son, one of your assistant coaches, Brandon Barnes, yesterday. And he was telling me that you guys now have a total of 10 junior college players on your roster. Uh, a lot of teams, a lot of programs shy away from JUCO guys. They have different philosophies with their recruiting. What is your philosophy on winning with a roster full of JUCO talent? And is this just you adjusting to the, the new normal of college basketball's transformation? Because I know you've been around for over three decades. Yeah. Well, it is. It's, it's, it's a change because obviously with the NIL and the transfer portal, uh, I think different guys have used different approaches uh, to help them uh, continue to have a, a program that you can kind of sustain. Uh, with all so much movement, you want to have something, some guys that you can retain. And as we talked about uh, having four starters back, three of those guys are guys that are junior college guys. So it's just a way that we kind of believe that uh, with the trend going the way it's going and with the NIL and the way kids are moving so quickly that we should definitely try to look at junior college players. And we've had a lot of success. One of my best teams here at Cal State Bakersfield, we had a bunch of junior college players that helped us get to the NCAA tournament. So we think that's a good pattern here and a good way for our program and our university and also just for the community to have a bunch of junior college guys on the roster. Hey, Rod, you got, you got two sets of brothers on the team, one of which is Marvin McGee third and Marvin McGee the fourth. Like, what, what do you do? You call three and four? Like, how do we do this? Well, we call them. They, we give them colors. You know how it is, Jeff. I mean, when, you, when you're in the coaching profession, you always come up with things. So, well, the older one, we call him Red. So, and the younger one, we call him Blue. So uh, it's pretty easy when you say red and blue because, you know, when both guys have the same name, you can get really confused at times. <laughs> how long, how long yeah. did it take him to, to get used to red and blue? Well, th they came with those names. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we kind of took their names from uh, what their father had given them. And, and obviously, uh, we were calling Marvin the third Marvin until blue marvin the fourth got here and he was like how are we gonna figure this out and they said well our dad called us red and blue so we we're like okay we'll try red and blue but really for me i call the old one marvin because i've been coaching him for three years now and i call the younger one blue <laughs> well, what's strange. the story on that is this like george foreman's kids you just call them one two it three is. four like I think, I think there's another one i think there's another one uh, a younger one that is Marvin the fifth. We got a color? We got a color for him yet? No, he's not here yet. We're going to give him a color though. Once he gets here, we'll give, we'll give him a color. <laughs> well, let's, let's just give him a color now, Rod. Why waste time? You're going to recruit him anyway. Well, we got red and blue. Time. We got red and blue, so we might as well go with white. What do you think about I like that? it. I like, it. <laughs> I like the, the American flag. I like it. I like it. Sure. Primary colors. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> you're uh, all your newcomers. It, it's fascinating to me. Um, just this the era that we're in, and uh, you know, you, obviously you've loaded up with these transfers, but your guys can play. I, you know, I've read a lot about you. Got a lot of versatility. You got guys that can flat out score. It seems like you're deeper inside. Is it Cameron Clark and, and Shakir? I, I don't want to even try to pronounce his last name. They're going to help you down in the middle. Yeah, I think those guys both can come in. They both have size. Being junior college guys, they played for two years. Uh, Shakir, you know, was a transfer from New Mexico State, so he's been at the Division One level. And then Cameron is another guy that's you know has developed late in his career. And add him along with Fidelis Ocarico. Then I think we've got a, a, a really experienced kind of guys that have been on the floor. And that's one thing about junior college guys. Those guys have played. You know, some of them played some 50 to 60 games. So they have some experience, even though it's not Division One experience. Hey, Rod, if I said to you, and again, you and I have been doing this a long time. If I okay. said to you, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you run college hoops. What's the first thing that you're changing right now? Well, first of all, I, I think the first thing I would change, I, I would get more of people like yourself and coaches, uh, you know, coaches that have coached the game. And we would sit in a room and we would really discuss the dynamics of really what's going on. I think what has happened, Jeff, a lot of times we haven't been given the, the guys that I think the people that are doing this work every day guys like you that have followed it for years aren't in the room in the decision making room and when you have guys that are making decisions or people that are making decisions and the people that are actually there on you know on the field uh doing the work uh it's kind of hard to, to to get to the things that really happen and i think we allow a lot to get away from me from us and i think all of this you know transfer portal things I think years ago, and then like you said, we've been around this a long time. Years ago, we were talking about ways that we needed to deal with this issue because we see, could see it coming. But uh, we didn't get a chance to get to the table and you know, we don't didn't know what happened. And now, uh, obviously it's a new norm and you know, whether you like it or not, it's here. You know, I, I've, I've never had the opportunity to sit down and eat lunch with you or hang out for more than like two minutes before a game or something like that. But I've always appreciated because you're a throwback. And um, I actually wrote down a quote that I've always loved. And every time I have one of your games, I try to put this on the broadcast, but it's different than most people's mentality. Quote, it's a privilege to be a student athlete, to be on scholarship and have the opportunities these young men have. And it kind of goes into what Jeff just talked about and just what he just asked you about, because your philosophy on things is quite different than the new era and new age that we're dealing with right now. Is that does that describe you in a nutshell? That's that's head on. I mean, I, I really struggled over the last couple of years when I saw some of the best coaches in the country, uh, people that had transformed uh, men's basketball and college basketball and maybe athletics all uh, together. Uh, to see those guys leave the profession because of where we have this point that where we are right now. and. Uh, I really struggle with that. And, and I had to try to figure out how do I do this? Because I've been a builder of men. I, I b believe in being foundational. I believe in being loyal and working hard. And obviously I think there's places for people to transfer and times to transfer and, you know, things don't work out. Uh, but just the open market we have now uh, is just not what I got in this business to do. So I had to really transform and really change some things and you know work on myself first to realize that i've been given a privilege each year to coach these young men and even if it's only for nine months or if it's for 12 months i've got to give them my all regardless of whether they're coming back next year or, or you know how things are and that's been difficult for me because i've always built for you know the next season i've built for building a program and you know it's Sad as I feel like now we're not building programs, we're building teams. And, and you know, you got to make that adjustment because, again, we talked about these guys I have, uh, and we talked about it, one of the key points in the very beginning, I have returners. And many people, many coaches can't say that they have four starters. So I am thankful and grateful for that. But 
we've gotten away from this being a privilege and, and, and really being grateful and thankful to get an education free and get all of the things that come along with college basketball. It's a great sport. Uh, it's a great profession to be in, uh, but we've really, you know, had brought about some changes here recently. Last question I have for you, um, Rod, is obviously you lose Caleb, who was kind of your guy last year. You bring back the other yeah. four starters. I, I want to know, is this team going to have a lot more balance or do we expect somebody else to maybe make that jump? One of these Juco kids that we don't know a whole lot about yet. Is, is there somebody that we need to know that, that's going to kind of come quickly here? I think we will have more balance, but I think Jamil Jones, a kid out of soft suburban, out of Chicago there. I mean, he, he has a knack for scoring the basketball, but I think we have some other guys have gotten better. I think we have more depth. So I think it'll be more scoring we will depend on more people. But if you want to call a name out, that's probably going to get double figures a lot, a lot of nights is Jamil Jones. Well, listen, uh, great catching up. Uh, we don't do it yeah. enough. So, Great seeing yeah. you. Listen, you are old school, but you're, you're adapting. You're adapting and, you, and you've got no choice, Rod, right? No choice at all. And, and it's great to see you guys, especially Jeff. It's been a while. Appreciate you, uh, you guys having me on and really looking forward to the season. No, likewise, likewise. Rod Barnes, head coach, Cal State Bakersfield. Uh, we'll coach you in his 800th game this season. And uh, thanks a lot, Rod. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. Awesome. We are so excited to have you on here and talk about the team this year. We've got a lot to look forward to, right? A lot of new, a lot of newcomers on this from Melissa Secchioli to Trinity Slocum. We got a lot to look forward to. So walk me through what we can expect from uh, Cal State Bakersfield in your first season at the helm. Yeah, stylistically, my philosophy is pace, space, and create. And so we want to be an up-tempo team. We have good spacing. Uh, we want to load the floor with snipers because I believe that oxygen <laughs> a good a good offense has oxygen and it, you need that with shooters and then can they create for themselves and others so we just want to make sure we're able to create good offense pay space and create and then conversely do that same thing defensively we want to limit space shrink space and then have really good scouts to uh, take away people's creativity on that end coach is a new coach to this league and by the way welcome i mean i know this is sort of home for you in a way and it's so wonderful to have you uh, in this league, but I'm kind of wondering if you could help us understand um, how much time have you had in, in getting hired to be able to kind of watch film, get yourself familiar uh, with this league and kind of understand the pieces that you have, but also the pieces that other teams have, because I think watching film and really digging in to try to plan uh, and scout is such a, such a key piece um, of what new coaches have to do. Definitely, and we're, we're, we'll be heavy uh, scout-driven staff, but I've been watching since I got a call for the interview. <laughs> and so I, I've been breaking down these teams for a few months, and then I hired Advit Raghavan, who was an assistant at Cal State Northridge last year. So he's very familiar with the conference, and that was a, a perk of having him because we've already got sort of our scouts and play calls for uh, some teams, and we'll, we'll see. What's what's impressed you most about the group you've got so far since you arrived on campus? What's been the most impressive part of kind of building this team and figuring out what you guys want to do this year? Yeah, when I when I was interviewing, the two things they said they really, really wanted were for structure and to be connected. And so we've we've done a really good job with that. And so I love that they're connected and they're they're really have adapted my personality too in terms of urgency wins and stacking days. And so they've just done a really good job with, with buying into how we want to do things. Coach, some of these pieces, and, and you just spoke about it, some of the things that you want to do and what they want to do will, will require um, your, certainly your returning players. And I, and I specifically will point out Taylor Caldwell, a graduate student guard, Garrison Freeman, a redshirt junior forward, uh, Caldwell sat out as a medical redshirt. Good to have her back. I know the year prior, a great little shooter, averaged 8.8 uh, .8 points. I probably expect you might need her to average in double figures. And then Freeman, who played in 22 games, uh, she's a she almost became a regular day-to-day -day starter, starting in 12, but she also did give you uh, that program 20 minutes. 
Um, talk about those two players and then maybe another key to, uh, one or two players, if you can, that, that you've seen so far in practice and, and training. Yeah. I joke with Taylor all the time because we're about the same age. And so um, she's got a ton of experience. She's, she's 24 years old. She's in year seven um, playing Division One basketball. So she's steady. Um, she's got a great basketball acumen and, and she can score it from all three levels. She loves the mid range, but um, we really tried to expand and develop her three point game. And so she's been phenomenal for us and we'll, we'll rely on her heavily. Uh, Garrison Freeman has been a pleasant surprise from the last group because when I first met her, I'm like, hey, I, I need you to become a sniper and be someone who can stretch the floor. And she's like, I don't know, coach, but she shot it extremely well and she's bought into how we want to play. And so she's been really, really good. Another sniper that we have is Melissa Secchieroli from Warhead State. She's a fifth year, so another kid with a ton of experience who's 23 years old. And Trinity Slocum from SFA has been phenomenal for us at the point guard spot. She's got incredible vision. She takes care of the ball. And, and now we're starting to get her in attack mode um, from the three-point line. So she's been special. And the good thing is, is they're an experienced group. They've all played at the Division One level for a couple of years. So really excited to have them. And now we're just really trying to get them connected. Yeah, you guys really do have a big veteran presence this year in your first season, which I think uh, is going to help you a lot heading forward. You mentioned with Taylor how, you know, you're basically the same age. She's a full grown adult at this point. How much does that that help to have that sort of a veteran leader uh, on this squad? Yeah, our players look to her. Um, she's just kind of one of those kids you gravitate to. She, she thinks the game at a high level. She's one of the kids I can text at any time and send her actions that I like. ATO, she'll still send it back. So she really loves basketball. And the players know that and they, they want to be like her. And also she's from Bakersfield. So she wants to represent uh, this university, this city um, with, with extreme class. And so she, I think that she deserves an awesome year. She's overcome a ton of injuries. Um, three ACLs and to, to come back and, and to want to play is pretty special. And she's just got that Bakersfield grit. And I need that. I, I love kids that have some grit. They're underdogs. And she's been phenomenal. You've got Ariana Dizon, too, playing for the first time this year, Coach. Um, also, can you just talk a little bit about her in, in this mix? Yeah, Ari has been great. She's versatile. Um, she can play inside and outside. And so she's going to play significant minutes for us. Um, I, I love that kid. She's really bought into what we want to do. She loves our style of play. And so I look, I expect her to have a great season. And I, I told her she can be an all-conference player of the day as first from our first workout. So I just have a quick follow-up here um, because I, I, when you and I spoke the other night, we talked about the top eight uh, in this league and being able to play in championship week in Henderson, Nevada. It's tough. It's gritty. Those top eight slots are hard to get to. These coaches, and I know you're going to do the same thing, uh, when you get your arms wrapped around this program and your head's sort of, you know, on a swivel right now, but everybody's playing the top teams to get ready because the top eight, they want to be there. What are you doing uh, to create habits within your own program to do things the way that you know it will take uh, to get in the top eight? Yeah. I just believe that we have to do things the right way every day. And we've been tracking wins and losses in terms of practice. And so our habits from drill to drill um, are, are they how winners would operate? And so if you're ever doing something wrong, I'm like, would a great player do that? Would a great coach do that? I asked myself, I asked our staff that. And so I just want the standards really high because I think if our habits are great, then the results will take care of themselves. And so I've been a part of championship programs. I've, I've worked for really great coaches. And so I'm taking a lot from what I learned from them and I try to live a life where I'm just stacking days and building on good habits and like I told you I think that they're starting to adapt my personality a little bit which is which is pretty cool um, because I'm a blue collar gritty type of person and I told you I was an underdog and all these guys are underdogs and so we kind of all mesh well together and uh, we're just going to continue to work to win. Tell me more about them them adapting to your personality. What have been kind of your, your favorite moments or experiences or conversations that you've had with your group where you've seen that kind of shine? Yeah, just from an energy standpoint, a uh, high energy person, like I said, inter, uh, urgency wins. And then just these guys, just from a toughness standpoint and just like, what is tired? What is nervous? What are hard things? Like we, those are things that we just know we're going to accept and we're going to do. 
And one of the things that they, they don't think they liked it initially, but we, we did a team retreat and we went camping and they had to put up their tents and survive out there. And that was, that was hard work for them, but I just want them to know that they can do hard things. As long as they come together, you can do anything. And so uh, they, they've come together and I just, you know, I'm looking forward to them maintaining that through the highs and lows of the season. Are you a big camper? You like setting up the tents and going out there? Is that something you love? Yeah, I love the outdoors. I love CrossFit. I love anything hard. I do that gets you, you know, a little bit mentally tougher. That's awesome. I love it. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Coach. We really appreciate it, and we're looking forward to, to what you guys do in your first year at the helm. Awesome. Thank you. Go runners.